The Golden Gate Bridge is such an iconic part of the Bay Area landscape, it's hard to imagine a time when the short, scenic drive from Marin to San Francisco was a first. May 28th, 1937, opening day. When it opened, thousands came to marvel at the tallest and longest single-span suspension bridge in the world. Opening celebrations lasted an entire week with pageants, parades, and speeches. Also on hand, a human ribbon of beauty queens. The Fiesta Queens were the final ribbon, as it were, in the various ribbons that were cut to open the bridge. They were holding hands across the roadway, and they part, and the cars could drive through. Anandamai Arnold is one of 15 artists commissioned for International Orange, a new public art exhibition honoring the 75th anniversary of the Golden Gate Bridge. She's creating a series of dresses based on the Fiesta Queens from the bridge's opening. To inspire the design for each dress, she's compiled historical research about the counties which funded the bridge, carefully choosing symbols that reflect the spirit of each region. I tried to interview sort of people from different counties and talk to them and say, what is meaningful to you about the place, not just what would you see as a tourist? Marin has got the tunnel that you drive through with the rainbow painted on it. You go through that and you're in Marin and you feel like, ah, so that's going to get worked into my design for Marin. So I know one of the last dresses you're working on is for San Francisco. Mm -hmm. Can you show me what you've got? Yeah. I'm hoping to do some kind of phoenix in the front, which has become somewhat of a symbol of the city since the earthquake. This was going to be just on the skirt. And then I said, oh, it's not nearly unfurled enough for a phoenix. So now it's moved up and it's going to go all the way to the top. And then I've been testing out different colors of orange. Unlike the original dresses, Anandamai's creations will be crafted almost entirely from paper. The dresses are all made of paper with some fabric to reinforce them. But I sew it, I glue it, I cut it, I stretch it. And the crepe paper, the reason it's so special to work with is because it's all gathered up. And so it has spring in it. So if you stretch just one part, then it's no longer flat. It gets all these different undulating shapes. I just stretched the paper to get it to be the right shape. You'd never do that with cloth. You'd have to cut it and piece it all together. Wow. That looks awesome. It really comes alive when you put it on. You, you know, just... Yeah, I, I like them warm. So. so what does it feel like to have it on? Fairly comfortable. This one does have its secret plant inside. Can we see it? I don't know if it's possible to see when it's on. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. Oh, maybe it is. The hem needs a little finishing. You can uh -huh. see the whole thing from here. A pot plant. Yes. The underground economy. Is yes. that... <laughs> <laughs> you can't really think about Mendocino without thinking about that. Ananda Maya Arnold, in some ways, really gets to the heart of this whole conversation about innovation and creativity and, and looking things in a different way. The work is conceptually sound, but it's also so beautifully made. Because crepe paper and fog aren't a good mix, Anandamai's dresses will be some of the last artworks installed at Fort Point, the Civil War era military base that will house the International Orange Exhibition. Installation of the less delicate works has already begun. When thinking about a art project for the Golden Gate Bridge's 75th anniversary, I was really fascinated with this idea of a fictional souvenir shop. And since so many tourists visit the bridge every year, um, this idea of a store in which everything was just saturated with the color of the bridge, but in the end nothing is for sale. It's more about the kind of memory of the bridge and the color, which is what most people actually take away with them when visiting. These buntings are by Allison Smith, and they're graduated colors of orange, as you can see, and some of them are uh, international orange, uh, specifically in reference to the color of the bridge and the title of this exhibition. As director for the Foresight Foundation, curator Cheryl Haynes has overseen several installations at other sites in the Presidio, but the Fort Point yeah, location I is presenting a unique set of challenges. 
it is a huge challenge to install electronics in an old fort, which is basically outside. And yesterday, like the fog was just pouring over the side of the fort. So it's really damp in here, really salty. And that is not a good mix with electronics. The piece I'm doing for the project here is called Span. I think one of the um, things that draws people to the Golden Gate and why it's so beautiful and amazing is the contrast between um, the mountains and the coastline, which are so um, variegated and changeable, and this human structure, the sort of straight line of the bridge against that. So there's such a contrast between those two different forms that's just stunning. As a East Bay person, I never drive across it. I mean, I could probably count on two hands the times I've been over it, but doing this project's been amazing because now I feel a huge connection to it. And that's exactly what organizers are hoping for, fresh perspectives and appreciation for a familiar and beloved landmark.